In my opinion, Kobe Mainu is a stylistic mix between Fernando Redondo and Clarence Seydorf. We saw him play in that deep single pivot for United against Everton, and he has that sort of fluid press resistance and ability to drop a shoulder and drive forward that we would see from someone like Fernando Redondo in the 1990s. However, further up the pitch, he's also got that raw athleticism and power that we saw from Clarence Seydorf pretty much throughout his whole career. And if, like me, you are a fan of retro jerseys, particularly retro jerseys with legends' names on the back, you can go over over to Jersey FIFA and check out all their retro and new season jerseys over there. A link will be in my Instagram bio which will be linked in the description and if you use code Atlantis at checkout you should also get a discount as well. Now from an aesthetic point of view on the pitch you definitely say that Mainu is more like Seedolf with both players having quite a stocky and strong build but also being quick across the ground which accompanied with their excellent ball control almost allows them to float past players in the centre of the pitch. But watching Mainu against Everton, I couldn't help but seeing some of Fernando Redondo in his play, with his ability to drop a shoulder and swivel direction quickly being akin to the Argentine. And so whilst many people have been saying that they see Kobe Mainu as more of a number 8, being given the license to push further forward, I think Ten Hag would be crazy to try to develop him in any other role than that deep single pivot. Because as we've seen with Manchester City, it's incredibly hard to replace that kind of player. Even the likes of Mateo Kovacic can't really play that role to the same level as Rodri. And so with United having a young player who definitely has that sort of potential and is already showing the sort of composure and calmness on the ball that you expect from a veteran player, it's almost like he doesn't really need much adjustment at all. It seems like he's been playing that position for years. Also, the fact that from a defensive point of view as well, Mainu is also performing to a very high level with his positioning, his awareness, he's knowing when to drop back into the back line, and his overall sense of danger being immaculate, particularly in the game against Everton, but also showcased throughout his other appearances as well. I don't see why Kobe Mainu can't develop into a top player in that deeper midfield position. Midfielders like Jao Neves have been talked about in regards to potential moves to Manchester United, and I do have a video coming out analysing that particular move. If it is already out, I'll leave it linked in the description. If not, subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you do get notified when it does come out. But in my opinion, despite Jao Neves without doubt being one of the best up-and-coming central midfielders in European football, I just think it would be nonsensical for United to drop 80 to even £100 million, which is his release clause, on a young, deeper-line playmaker when Kobe Mainu is right there in the squad. And despite being a bit behind Jao Neves at the moment, obviously because he's played less games, I actually think Kobe Mainu's potential is higher. First of all, from a physical and an athletic point of view, Kobe Mainu is definitely superior. Whereas Kobe Mainu resembles someone like Clarence Seydorf, you'd have to say that Jao Neves is more of a Xavi or an Iniesta. Also, whilst Jao Neves is certainly a deeper line playmaker in possession, I don't know if out of possession from a defensive point of view, he's quite good enough to play as that deep single pivot. Whereas I think Kobe Mainu, if he plays in that position for United for the rest of the season, is more than capable of playing that role to the level required. I also think that Kobe Mainu has one particular attribute which makes him stand out from all other young central midfielders, and that is his versatility which I think will be key for Ten Hag this season. So even though Kobe Mainu is starting as a deep single pivot, in possession United do use a lot of fluidity. You do see sometimes the centre-backs pushing into central midfield, the full-backs inverting or pushing high up the flank, and so when United do drop into their 3-1-6 possession shape, the player in that deep single pivot really needs to be able to play in any of the four deeper roles, and I definitely think Kobe Mainu can do this as he showed against Everton. Now someone like Jao Neves could definitely do this in possession. You could see Neves dropping between the two centre-backs but also pulling into a wide position to receive the ball as well. The issue comes out of possession. I just don't trust Neves in that deeper four because there are going to be times when the opposition do win the ball back and there's a transitional play where the full-backs or maybe one of the centre-backs are caught high up the pitch and Neves needs to fill in in that back four. However, certainly from a physical and an aerial point of view, he's not the sort of player that you would want, and he's not particularly great in 1v1 positions in the channels either. However, I think Kobe Mainu could easily slot into one of these positions, capable of filling a central position when the opposition have the ball, or even dropping in as one of the fullbacks temporarily. He showcased excellent composure and timing in a 1v1 situation against Everton in a wide position, and we also saw his ability to read danger when he made that clearance off the line, and that's exactly what you want from a defensive midfielder. Someone who's not just great in possession, but can also essentially be a fifth defender as well when needed. 
And so mainly because of his physicality and his athleticism, but also his defensive ability and versatility, I really don't see the point in bringing in someone like Jao Neves who's going to cost an arm and a leg when you've got a player who I think is arguably even better than him already in the squad. So let me know what you think of Kobe Mainu in the comment section below. My other video on Kobe Mainu did get copyrighted. If you do want to see that video, it will be on my Patreon. And any of my other videos that do get copyrighted as well, I will be uploading onto there.